I want to talk about line loss. <clears throat> right, hello again. <clears throat> First of all, I do apologise for the echo. I'm in my workspace at Keele University <clears throat> where I'm setting up my alternative ham radio shack. I'm here today, it's a weekend, so the, the it's a, it's a weekend, so the building is empty. So I've come in to I'm putting up some more of these soundproof tiles onto these walls, trying to bring down the echo a bit more. So that's part of the plan for today. Put them up, and I brought with me the Icom IC705, and I brought a small linear amp. And the idea is, it's all, I'm trying to build like a modular system, so I can just bring the radio in with me, plug that into the linear, operate from here, unplug the 705 and take that back home with me. So it becomes almost like a plug and go setup. So, um, so far I've managed to put some tiles on a few of these walls. Eventually this is going to be getting these sound absorbent tiles, but for today, I'm going to be doing that wall over there. This is where the radio is going to be living for now. That and a couple of our awards that we've won. We'll put them next to the radio, so um, that's, that's the plan. And then I'll just talk you through a little bit about some of the questions that I've had sent in from the, last, the previous video from here. So I'll go go over some of those comments, and I'll just I'll I'll do a full run from the antenna right through the feed line to the setup in here, because there's a discussion to be had around loss line loss. So I'll show you the setup for now. Right, <clears throat> that's tuned back in on the 20 meters. But the other day I tuned it to 17 using the analyzer, so I had to use the uh, 705 with the SWR um, tester on it. That's tuned in, quick inspection, everything seems to be all right. <clears throat> uh, some people have mentioned on the last video that there's uh, wires going into the building, which I'm aware of. And, and um, I am quite close to them. <clears throat> the the internet and the telephone are supplied underground to here, but these will still terminate somewhere in the building. So I am I have got to be really mindful that I might end up having to move further away from these wires. Other people have mentioned that there's some nice trees up here. We might be able to get a an end fed wire up onto the over there somehow. See if we can just get it over one of those branches. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to have to just do some sort of slingshot. Well, uh, stick with this for now. And <clears throat> we'll stick with this. The amplifier is a HLA150 plus. <clears throat> so this, <clears throat> this the specification says it can do up to 150 watts. However, I've seen some of the investigations that other hams have done with this um, this amp, and there's a sweet spot about 80, 90 watts where the signal that comes out of it is relatively clean. Because these sort of amps, they don't produce a very clean signal output, especially if it's overdriven. So I'm going to be putting about four, four, five watts from the 705 into it, and that should give me about 80 watts out. <clears throat> Hopefully that's a nice, 
hopefully that's as clean as a signal as I'm going to get from this setup. So um, I think there's a contest on which might give us the opportunity to get a couple of contacts in. We'll see anyway. So we'll try and see what happens. At the moment, I'm only using the RF sensing switch for this. I'm using it in the manual band mode, but I've not got a PTT cable between the two yet. I think I've got one at home. However, I've used this quite a few times with the 705 in the old Land Rover. And this does switch very, very subtly, very, very, um, it's got a good sensitive RF sense in there and it does switch. I've never had any problems. However, I, uh, I think for insurance purposes, I will be getting the PTT organized between the two. But for the moment, it's just using, uh, when it senses RF, uh, the sort of switch over. Uh, I'm not using the preamp on it. Uh, Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Uh, Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango, you're 5 by 9, 15. Yeah, thank you very much, you are 5 by 9. Is it a country code or, or serial code? You're 001 for serial, the uh, QSL? Uh, no, it's uh, the operator Oh yeah, Roger. Okay, yeah. Well, the age is fifty-two, five-two QSL. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, seven-three. Yeah, seven-three. Good luck. Uh, thanks. Uh, age. He was fifteen. Sounds much more mature than fifteen. Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Stand by, you are taking the Zulu Tango, eight. Uh, Zulu Tango. Yeah, Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Uh, okay, Mike uh, Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Okay, good afternoon, we are in the kingdom, five, nine, five, six. Yeah, thank you very much. You are fa at five, nine, and the number is, in my age, is five, two, fifty, two, QSL. Yeah, seven three. Good luck. Take it, your zip. Uh, Mike zero Sierra Zulu Tango. Mike zero Sierra again. Mike zero Sierra Zulu Tango. Mike Sierra uh, Mike zero Sierra Zulu Tango uh, five nine one four. Yeah, thank you very much. You are five nine five two QSL. Take it, your zip. <laughs> And um, we've got this coffee table in the office now, so this pulls down and closes down onto that. So I can put away the the amp inside there with the bits that I need and shut it down and then put all the stuff thing back on. I think that way <clears throat> it's sort of out of the way. Because I don't want I don't want radio to be um because it's a workspace. So the radio is for sometimes in the afternoon just to tune into a little bit, see what's happening around about lunchtime. But on days like today where I can't go out and do any proper outdoor stuff because I need to be close to home, I can come into the office and play a bit of radio, tidy up a little bit, you know, chill out here a little bit. So, right, I want to talk about line loss because we have to consider this uh, in a imperfect world that um, we live in. It's an imperfect setup. So from the antenna, I'm going to be putting a common mode choke to choke off the uh, feed line on this end, and most likely at the other end as well. So imagine that a couple of connections there the common mode choke then we have this run i think it's 20 meters it's super low loss um i think it's formula zero super low loss 
coax it's really chunky really really fat stuff <clears throat> and then it's terminated here where I put on this cable this one here <laughs> because what I have to do is when I want to operate the radio I have to put the coax to the window so that's that'll be two connections already with the common road choke on then we're going to the office and at the moment this terminates into one of them because because on both ends of that particular cable there there's two female connectors on either end, female connector on either end, rather than, ideally what I'd like to have is a female one end and male the other, so plug that directly into the amp. Um, but for, for the moment, we've got it connected to another cable. That's another connection. And then this runs out into here. So, because of the length of the cable and the numerous adapters and connectors, there is going to be some line loss here. Now, I'm not going to work that out in my head. We can work it out on paper, I guess. If somebody else wants to work that out, put it in the comments below what you, what you think the line loss will be, how many dB. Is it significant enough? Do I have to worry about line loss on this type of setup? Because <clears throat> I, I guess people who are newer than me to the hobby might not consider um, how much they're losing in the feed line so please any comments on that enter the comments below right so these are growing they're puffing up quite nicely i reckon how many can i get on here two three Right, I've got 12, so I can put 12 up anyway <clears throat> and then come back and with the second pack, that's by another pack because I want to do that wall there maybe in strips, oh, I've got two up here as well there's another two <clears throat> I'm going to have a look at uh, some noise let's get the glasses on okay Let's find some bits of noise, so... There's a signal there. So, that... The noise levels... It's very low, that's good. That's nice. Actually, that's not bad. I know that the building's empty and a lot of the campus is switched off in many ways. Um, but the noise levels are quite low. We do have on this campus, there's a huge, uh, there's a, like a wind farm and, you know, with lots of renewable energy experiments going on. I think there might be even some solar um, solar cells as well, like industrial sized ones. Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Yeah, Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango, QSL.
Yeah, thank you very much for the uh, five four. You are about a four and a four um, there in the noise, but I can hear you in the noise. Uh, you're making it into the UK. It's a lovely sunny day here, and uh, I'm using about eighty watts into a tripod antenna, a small antenna QSL. Yeah, thank you very much, Dima. Have a great day. 7 3, bye bye. Right, what's going on? <clears throat> trying to use the spirit level but the the walls are just not straight enough so i'm trying to get the balance between the spirit level and keeping an eye on the on the wall making sure that this stays square <clears throat> and um, just waiting for all these to uh, puff up and then uh, i'll get them on i might just do this row for now one of the things I do need to do is start this calculator up. So it's a EM field exposure calculator. So power output from your equipment into your antenna is going to be about 80 watts. The antenna gain, I don't see any gain in there, is there? Let's put zero for now. So this online one is apparently um, and this cub is entering over 10 megahertz, so I, I'm mostly going to be using 14 megahertz and 18 megahertz. So we can use this online one. Maximum transmission anytime in a six minute period. Um, one. Please enter the operating frequency of your equipment at 14100 megahertz. The antenna gain, I need to check that on the slide more the journey specs. Compliance distance is 3.39 meters, that's fine. Nobody goes behind that. Nobody goes into that area over there. Um, Reactive near, foul, near field boundary is 3.39 meters. <clears throat> okay, let's print that. I think um, that's right. If 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 the slide wind, I, c I don't know if it, if that on 20 meters has got any gain. Please correct me if I'm. If I'm barking up the wrong tree on that. Any questions, comments, please add them in below. Thank you for previous questions and comments in previous videos. It's really appreciated. So there's still more work to do in here because it's still very, very noisy. Thanks for watching. I look forward to the next video. Bye-bye for now.